crossing point, the center point of a lot of the gang activities out on the cave flats was Manenburg. That is where had all this and these guys were operating like the mafia. They were ruthless. They had, they had like the leadership were like the godfathers, were their lieutenants, they had the disciplinary structures, they had guys that would assassinate rival gang members. It was like a road for everybody to walk up and down. That was a place, a killing place. They rob people with groceries. In the evening, they want to rape you, they rape you, the gangsters. The Americans and the clever and the clever kids was running up and down shooting. Then the hot lovers come from this side if they got a bandana against the clever kids. Then they go up when they came by there. Now the police also come up and then the police shot among all the gangsters. So there was a lot of shooting and killing and bad things on that field. It was just an open field. A vision for a type of society that we want and we said at the time in the 1980s the type of society that we want is a non-racial democratic South Africa where people could live in dignity you know where the doors of learning and culture shall be open where we will all be equal before the law and where the people shall govern that is the type of society that we were fighting for. we had a vision mm -hmm. And I come from that generation of children and young people mm -hmm. having grown up under apartheid mm -hmm. where we were removed, forcibly removed. But I was born in District 6, mm -hmm. told by the nationalist government at the time, listen here, this area where you are living has now been declared a white area. Mm -hmm. And you were then told you must go live in Heidefeld, you must go live in Manenberg, you must go live in Hanover Park, Lavender. All these areas were created, you know, and people did not have a choice. Mm -hmm. um, that was uh, under law, which was called the Group Areas Act. You had, like in Manenberg, for example, you, you had the two biggest gangs out on the Cape Flats. The hard living thing, which had members of all over, all over the Cape Metropolitan area. And the other gang is the Americans. Gang. What? Americans. The Americans, yeah, the ugly Americans. They call themselves the ugly Americans. And then you also get the young Americans. Those are the two biggest gangs on the Cape Flats. There's different zones here, no? But in the different zones are different gangsters. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is zone two. Yeah, zone two. The oh, yeah. That is zone three, the Americans. Yeah. That is zone four, the jesters. The jesters. That is zone five, clever kids. Clever kids. You see? You see yeah. what I mean? How to, the only way how we can overcome things like that, no? Is to be let out children be involved with each other ne? Yeah. and like if if we play competitions like hey today is zone three against zone four if we don't in, if we don't intervene at the early stage when that youngster is gonna join he gonna start he's gonna start from 10 11 year old joining a junior gang to primary school they start giving themselves identities because what happened? There's very few positive role models for these, for these children. So they see the gangsters as their role model. So it might be that in one family, there's two, three brothers that belong to a gang. You might have in one family, uh, two brothers belonging to rival gangs. It has happened. Where the one brother had to go and kill the other brother. Where neighbors, the one son belongs to the hard livings, the other son belongs to the Jesters or the Americans. 
the ugly Americans and then they pull it and it causes all kinds of conflict. And one of my brother is dating gangster Radan. And my child is also dating gangster Radan. And my sister's son has also been shot in gangster Radan. American. American to Americans. My child was American, out of American. He came to the art livings. But the art livings didn't kill him, the Americans they didn't kill him, the jesters killed him. Because the jesters in the art livings was getting fight among them. They get inspiration from the rap culture, you know, the west side and the east side story, that type of influence. So you had a group of junior gang members in Brazil that called themselves the West Siders. There was another group calling themselves the East Siders. You had that kind of dynamic. From a stone to a knife. From a knife to a gun. And you're not going to stop until there's somebody dead. For the outsider out there, it, it could give the perception as, as if everybody in Manenberg are gangsters. That is not the case. The gang elements are a minority in that community. What we told them, we've told them over the last couple of years, listen here guys, you either become part of a changing Manenberg or we will then isolate you. And also what has happened is a lot of these guys that were involved in gangs started getting involved in positive initiatives in the communities. They started to help with the cleaning up of the area, the greening of the and, and like the, the Man and the Peace Garden, I, I think is an example of that. It used to be a battlefield of rival gangs. But some of these guys were, un were involved and they have now taken ownership of their garden. It's a vibrant community. People love the music, they love the arts and culture. You could hear it yesterday with a band. And, 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 and what they forget is, you see, we, we, we were not born to be gangsters. Yeah. 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 Our mothers and fathers don't have the necessity like hey, our children are going to be gangsters. Yeah. Our family also want to see hey, one day my son going to be an aeroplane yeah. driver, yeah. one day my yeah. son going to be dead. Yeah. That's true. But dead dreams yeah. fall into water. Yeah. Yeah. So I haven't given up hope. In fact, I'm very optimistic about the future of this community. Despite its negative past, despite all the socio-economic difficulties, I think there's hope for the future. And we must give hope to the young children of them. When I see young children achieving, excelling, in sport, in arts and culture, academically, wanting to better their lives, that encourages me. People dying in our streets, mothers weeping over their kids, gangsters fighting, no oh, peace for me. We must stand together in harmony cause Maddenburg is changing for the good we are cleaning the streets and our roots safe, clean and smart well that is in our hearts Maddenburg is changing Maddenburg is changing for the good we want to create a better future for our children understand so that one day they can look back proudly and say that our parents have tried their best for us they've encouraged us despite the difficulties despite our struggles that's why I said we still have a long way to go Aluta continue the struggle continues my brother